DreamWorks has also managed to ruin the properties of three other production companies. I'd give us all cool call signs like fighter pilots. Hey bro, watch your jet. Watch your jet bro, watch your jet! Hi, I'm King Lava Cactus and mmm, does the Nine Realms look good? Oh, sorry, what's that? This is a hand-drawn scene from a music video, and this is from a movie almost a decade ago. Look, I just want to let you know that if you haven't seen the show already, you absolutely should not. This show releases seasons almost as fast as the British replace their governments. If you love the original How to Train Your Dragon franchise and you don't want to tarnish it, don't worry, I'll be giving very ample warnings before I start talking about all of that. This season disrespects the franchise to a degree I used to joke about, and we'll get to that, but anyways, I really hope you enjoy. But KLC, it's a kid's show. Why do you care? If you hate the show that much, then just don't watch it. Well, yes, it is targeted towards children, I think, but that doesn't make it any more exempt from critique than anything else. Very nice of them to fix this very dubious shield pattern too after myself and other YouTubers called them out on it. And believe me, I want this show to be good, and I know it can be. I still don't know why this was the style they went with. <sighs> Gross. Sweet, sweet grass. When the exact same rendering engine can do sand more realistic than the inevitable doom of us all? That's right, little Timmy. Even you are going to die. So in my previous videos for the Nine Realms, I covered the season chronologically episode by episode. I'm going to change that for this video and cover more select ideas and themes. It'll also hopefully keep this video more concise for you. If you want a more episode-specific breakdown, I'll leave Audrey's video in the description. And if you want a similar style to this video, I'll leave Razor's. As you might know, myself, Audrey Greywind, and Razorblade did a call for season 3 to go over our thoughts and to discuss the best or perhaps more accurately, the worst parts of the season. They just yeet two snails off yeah, of the thing okay. and they know okay. it too! <laughs> okay. I was like, when she steps off of the um... ATV and her foot hits the ground and it's like, wow! Well, we tried to do the same thing for season 4, and I'm not kidding when I say we made it 10 minutes into episode 1 and then agreed that we couldn't do it anymore. I'm Keith. Here's a little snippet from the call. Is there anything you liked about the season at all? So what was good this season? Well, we had some character development from Buzzsaw. Keith. And do you ever think about why he didn't have insurance on his logging company? He's not under work cover, he's under the RSPCA, the animal. We see how he's managed in the Ice Realm, which he's decided to stay in for some reason, because he must be able to leave the Ice Realm to have all of this. So that was good for the, I'm sorry, two episodes? Two out of six? Really solid antagonist there, DreamWorks. Right, half joking aside, there wasn't much, I'll be real. I'll start with arguably the best thing that happened this season, and then it'll trickle off. The season ended differently. Yes, that's the gold standard now. Olivia found out about what her only child gets up to. Lavender scented moisturizing lotion? Hmm, that's weird. And she's finally seen a dragon. A miracle. Consequences. So technically not this season, but still, a cliffhanger at least, and no big dragon doing nothing. There are a few scenes I thought were bigger than a New York City apartment, which is an improvement. Alex was great as always, but honestly, a bit weaker this season in my opinion. I think they just didn't give her as many lines, which is unfortunate, but that's not to say that there weren't some bangers. Does that book recommend a good place to vomit? What does a good feeling feel like? And Feathers has a sonic blast that will blow your soul right out of your body. Wanna see? If you expect disappointment, you're really disappointed. There were some Talix moments, but I'm not even kidding for this bit. I might be shipping Alex and Eugene, because he's actually the next most reasonable. Isn't Dragon Sight already the name of a gem in that fantasy game you and the other kids are always playing? Or maybe we could wait a year or two to pass in the show. But you're all cool with following a baby. <sighs> I never got the baby thing either. Cute, but useless. John, what does this mean? And why is 50% of the lore and useful information I know about this show coming from Twitter and not the show itself? There were actual expressions this season which I can appreciate, although some of them are a bit more nightmarish than others. <laughs> 
sorry I don't talk in a boo voice. I don't know what you expected me to do. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Moving on. Animation was decent. Here, Alex shaking is good, at least for the Nine Realms. Literally anywhere else would be the minimum effort expected. But then you have teleporting snow wraiths and fur clipping through solid ice. Ha! I knew this cave was feeling squatchy. Why does nobody proof watch these? Eugene's eye color is normal. Yay us. I have to commemorate Buzzsaw for attempting to kill these kids. Would really just work out better for everyone if I'm honest. My self-sacrificing friend, even though I heavily encouraged against it, decided to have the bright idea to watch it himself. And the top two items on the list of things done well were the music, particularly at the start and end of episode one, which I totally agree with. Not now, pal. and the fact that they moved the camera. Yes, that's what we're giving out awards for. Occasionally having one of the most necessary elements in media, and for rarely having a dynamic moving camera. They also did an incredible job at making this season the worst one yet. And now, everything else. Let me tell you right now that I wish I liked the taste of alcohol. Well, that's a bit off topic for a children's TV show. Well, let me tell you why I wish I had a drinking problem. Because oh my god would it make it so much easier to forget the absolute stain this show has left on me. This season was something else. And not in a good way. Let's start with June. June needs a f Rewrite. Episode 3 was abysmal and I was beyond disappointed because I don't think the concept of the episode was bad per se, but her character was just so out of place. Sorry, are, are you seeing what I'm seeing? In this image, it's throwing dragons to their death. What if it's not? She didn't have to cut me off! I have notes on every episode about how rude she is to the other characters, and I cannot believe that there are, one, people who like her character, and two, there is someone or someones who gave this character the green light. She is so unlikable. It's almost like, oh, I don't know. Like they knew. The arrogance she has towards the other's ideas is incredible, particularly the way she continuously dismisses her brother. How could you be such an idiot? You put Alex in danger. Hold it right there. This whole thing was my idea. Yeah, that's right. So watch who you're calling an idiot. Idiot. However, in saying that, I will admit that each of them are all arrogant at points, but they really pushed June back down a flight of stairs this season. It's a Chinese myth, Eugene, not a silly story. I'm not saying it's real. <laughs> The way they force Chinese mythology down the audience's throats is more force than your average YouTuber telling you to hit like and subscribe if you're enjoying the video. <coughs> Hilarious, please subscribe. And their favorite game to play is Raid Shadow Legends using the Raycon E25 earbuds. Before that really quick, this video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Hit me up by the way. Kill me. Going back to her arrogance, there is never a single thought from her that she might be wrong about all of this. She blatantly defends her dragons when they pick the worst path when Pulls them out. Your dragons chose the slipperiest part. Well, the winds aren't as strong over here. <laughs> and is again rapid to dismiss what I can only presume to be the Book of Dragons, even before it's had a chance to do anything, and then even after it's been proven correct. This smoking skull. Hmm. I don't see any skulls. Do you? Guess your book doesn't know everything. Funny coming from someone who looks for answers in a thousand year old myth. June's eye color looks even more saturated this season, or maybe that's just because they've made Eugene's look normal. I understand that this season or episodes need plot, but I can literally pick out the exact line from which the plot starts. I think they might have hurt themselves. It should be something that was brewing in the background, hence why the first How to Train Your Dragon movie was so good. It explained the idea that this conflict had been going on for generations. And it's been here for seven generations, but every single building is new. June is not only forced into the most obvious seen conflicts with her supposed friends, but also contradicts herself through the same episodes. I'm not saying it's real. It's almost like they knew. I know they may not be true. Can we just talk about how the Ice Realm doesn't actually make any sense? Like, legitimately. 
None. From the surface you go down this 20 to 30 foot hole in the ground and ta-da, there you are. But then you immediately exit this small tunnel with no elevation. How in the goddamn? Literally what? Which keep in mind should be the ceiling of a cave 20 feet up. In episode 2 there's a storm that forces them out of the ice realm. There are two types of clouds that bring rain and storms, nimbostratus and cumulonimbus clouds. Let's do a quick guessing game as to what the minimum height for these clouds are. Is it A, 10 feet, B, 20 feet, C, 50 feet, oh that's higher than the supposed ceiling, or is it D, 2,000 feet? I'll let you think about that. Bro, what the f- Oh, it's 2,000 feet for these idiots and 6,500 for these f Now let's sit and ponder as to what the highest altitude these clouds can reach. I'm not even gonna waste your time with this one. It's 60,000. Do you understand how insanely tall that is? That is double the height of Mount Everest and then just casually another whole two Eiffel Towers on top. Do you get how f absurd this place is. It's senseless. I think the ice realm was pretty interesting. It's arguably the most well designed and well textured. There was a lot you could do with the terrain that would still keep it realistic and not totally out there and to some extent this was utilized. This mountain they go to in episode 3 stands out to me as something that's quite cool and unique about the realm but it's a shame it's not possible in the world they've set up. Yes that's right not our world. They contradicted themselves again in their own story which they created. I don't know how they keep doing it. First it was rewriting the Fault Ripper's death like four times over, and now they can't decide if we're under or above ground. Also, why does this mountain have an AoE attack? Poison. Poison. Yes. I'm not sure if this was a side benefit of the Snow Realm or they just so happened to put more than $100 into scene creation this season, but some of the shots actually felt quite large. Again, not a very high bar to pass with the other seasons, but still. The more mountainous terrain probably helps cover up some of the very empty scenes that are probably nothing more than some slightly elevated ground in front of a gradient sky. Look at this, right? Purple at the top, more pale towards the bottom, put in some cloud PNGs, adjust the opacity, done. I mean shit, this music video has a more realistic looking sky and I'm pretty sure it was done practically and it's it's on screen for less than two seconds. Look at what is possible. And if you want to stick to a basic looking gradient, Into the Spider-Verse did this flawlessly in this shot. It's perfect. DreamWorks renderer Moonray is coming out in 2023, so you can bet that I will be creating the sky from How to Train Your Dragon. So just as a little taster before you skip this part, I promise I'll give you a heads up. When I finish the season, my notes looks like this. Like I mentioned at the beginning, Audrey, Razor and I could not complete a call for this season and I'm putting a lot of it down to how season 4 successfully attempted to call upon the original franchise. But instead of making the show better, it made the show worse, while also managing to scar the original and damage the reputations of the dragon's name entirely. This is the point where I'll be talking specifically about how they did so and showing scenes of such, so please skip to the timestamp on screen should you wish to avoid all of that. To those of you who are left, Hi. The whole idea of the hidden world just gets thrown out the window because this literally isn't possible otherwise. Again, more so than already because dragons are definitely not able to return in peace at the moment. Here, take this. You'll find it might be useful on your travels. To forcibly progress the plot or something. So yeah, um, actually what was stopping you from doing that yourself? Like you couldn't just turn it with anything else or make your own? That keyhole on top doesn't even do anything by the way, and the key that he does use doesn't fit. How the f- Do you mess up inverting a model's geometry? And no, that's not YouTube compression, that is actually how low resolution the texture is in the one and only object in this shot. So you may recognize it as being similar to the Book of Dragons, but I literally refuse to believe it is. But wait, I can hear you all now. Burke just redid the Book of Dragons to fit better with their new perceptions of dragons. Okay, sure. But why? The whole point was that dragons don't return, and if they did, it would be when they could return in peace and there would be that understanding. And perhaps the more obvious point, why do all of the dragons look so fierce if they redid the book and that awareness was there? Plus, if they did redo the book, then why would they draw themselves as teenagers? And I'm sorry, but Hiccup could draw dragons way better than whoever did this. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that this page is an absolute disgrace, and I'm trying to defend the living crap out of the original franchise by saying that this book is literally impossible to come from that time period. The most normal looking person in regards to being the most similar to the final movie is Astrid, then Fishlegs. But I mean, like everything else in this show, the bar hasn't been set very high if I'm honest. And the absolute 
disrespect they have for writing in the book. Do you know how valuable that is just as a piece? By all accounts, that is the best preserved literary text of a long gone era, and they just think it's okay because Tom is a descendant of Hiccup. And I cannot emphasize how incredibly entitled, narcissistic, self obsessed, and disrespectful Tom and his cast friends are. It's incredible. Plus, we gotta add to it, build on top of those who came before us. Yeah, good point. Oh, baby, a triple! Now let's talk about the leg. Without even discussing how the f that thing has been so perfectly preserved in an open air damp cave where there's not even a single spot of rust or mold on it. Okay, well, whatever it is, it's coming with me. If they want some Viking artifact to destroy of hiccups, they could have just used his shoulder pad that was shown falling off in the third movie. If the Ryers actually think that having Hiccup's spare leg be destroyed to save Tom's life would make the viewers happy, they deserve an award for the incredible lack of self-awareness they have. So while ruining their own franchise, DreamWorks has also managed to ruin the properties of, I cannot believe I'm saying this, three other production companies. This mainly applies to this season, but it's happened in the past too, the most obvious being Harry Potter, but it also somehow extends to Star Wars and Spider-Man, of all things. I gotta ask, who or what is this show's target audience? Is it the people who have seen and have grown up with the original franchise, or the six-year-olds with parents who don't know how to spend time with their kids? Majority of the positive reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, or Tomatoes, are adults saying that it was good because it kept their children entertained for a few hours. I am dying with the parenting here. This season had a lot of callbacks to the How to Train Your Dragon movies and Race to the Edge, like stolen lines, almost scene for scene recreations of episodes, general character and item appearances. So in the case that people are meant to pick up on these, like this, then it's clearly meant for an older audience who would have seen the originals. But on the other hand, maybe they think they can get away with copying the original shows because they know their target audience isn't at all invested in them. And when you have something as basic and cheap as a fold-out page, it kind of makes me think that they're targeting a younger audience. And then he fails to show up the right page. One job, Tom. One job. Here, I do not give a sh about this scene because nothing matters, there are no consequences for anyone or anything in this show. And I think they could have done something super interesting with consequences and development with Buzzsaw. Hell, they set up a perfect scene for it. I'll let you take a look at it first. Buzzsaw, without a shadow, don't you dare, without a shadow of a doubt, was impaled. Oh, look at that. I've been impaled. <laughs> this would have provided an incredible opportunity to challenge Tom's perspectives on dragons, although it would be less impactful because of how they've disregarded every other encounter in the last three seasons, again, mistakes add up and all that other crap, by showing him that there is a dragon that is completely willing to turn against a human and harm them. It would give reasoning behind Buzzsaw's character and would reinforce his hatred while giving him permanent consequences as he would not fully recover, so he uses this as a strength to use his mind more, to plan, to become a mastermind that can outsmart the kids and be a threat to Icarus and it's almost like we've already done this in the same franchise and better. Nah, that'd be silly. Take it. Oh, what the f Again, a younger audience is probably the target demographic because there were scenes where it's all just a little too convenient or they skip past something that would actually pose a challenge because they know their audience isn't going to do sh about it, or so they think. I'm on to you, DreamWorks. I know I've ripped on the show, but I need to be very serious for a second. Do not go after any individuals mentioned in this video. As I've mentioned not just here, but also in my other videos, the people working on this series have my utmost respect for continuing to work through this as hard as they are with such unfortunate circumstances. But yeah, it's a bit sh Season 5 they've set up well, so hopefully we have another Season 3 kind of deal where it's actually bearable, but we'll see. I know this video was a bit different, so let me know if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Let me know if you agree or if you have any other comments about the show. Please consider leaving a like and subscribing. It really, really helps me out. Until then, I'll catch you in the next one.